Hi, I'm Fei Xia, and I'm presenting Interactive Gibson Benchmark, a benchmark for interactive navigation in cluttered environments. This is a collaboration between Stanford University and robotics at Google. In cluttered and unconstrained environments, navigation often requires physical interaction with the environment to change its configuration, such as opening doors or setting obstacles aside. However, most robot navigation solutions avoid all kinds of physical interactions, rendering navigation inefficient and sometimes even impossible. As a consequence, existing robot navigation may be sufficient for factory settings and controlled environments like the one in the video, but they fall short in less controlled setups such as homes, offices, or hospitals. We propose to develop and study interactive navigation, new navigation strategies that include physical interactions with the environment to facilitate navigation. With this purpose, we present two novel contributions. First, we provide a new simulation environment, the Interactive Gibson Environment, also known as iGibson, with large realistic 3D environments for developing vision-based interactive navigation solutions. Second, we define the first benchmark to evaluate, study, and compare different navigation strategies with interactions. The benchmark is composed of three elements, the Interactive Gibson Environment, a novel metric, the Interactive Navigation Score, or INS, to measure the quality of interactive navigation solutions, and three competitive reinforcement learning baselines that researchers can compare with. But why do we need a new simulation environment in order to study interactive navigation? Current photorealistic simulators are based on 3D reconstructions of real-world spaces. These models resemble the real-world distribution of objects and rooms and have the potential of simplifying sim to real transfer. The drawback is that these 3D reconstructions are one single interconnected mesh for the entire scene. It is not possible to change the configuration of objects in them by interacting. Therefore, these environments cannot be used to develop and evaluate interactive navigation solutions. In this video example, we can see a robot in the first version of Gibson environment navigating and colliding with a chair. We would expect the chair to move, but because the entire scene is a rigid mesh, the robot has to slide around the chair to continue its motion in a very unrealistic manner. There is a need for new simulation environment with photorealistic large scenes that can be interacted to move objects. This is the motivation behind the interactive Gibson environment, a novel environment with hundreds of reconfigurable scenes obtained from real 3D reconstructed environments. Some of them are shown in the picture on the left, where you see the layout and the interactive objects in green. We provide thousands of interactive objects, including furniture pieces of various classes, and other small everyday objects like toys and shoes. To support increased complexity in the generation of virtual images, we also provide a novel fast rendering engine. Our goal is to obtain large photorealistic environments that allow interactions. To achieve this, we enhance the existing 3D reconstructions from the previous Gibson simulator with interactivity. In this way, we enable interactive navigation without losing the real-world distribution of objects and rooms in the models. To make this in a scalable manner, we constructed a human-in-the-loop annotation pipeline to convert non-interactive textured 3D reconstruction meshes into interactive environments with object models. First, we run a pre-trained 3D semantic segmentation network on a point cloud obtained by sampling the mesh. From these semantically segmented point cloud, we extract the instances based on connected components and retrieve object proposals, regions where objects of interest classes are present. In the first round of annotation, we consider objects from the classes of chair, table, desk, couch, and door. After human filtering, a subset of the object proposals are submitted to Amazon Mechanical Turk for humans to annotate point correspondences between CAD models and the original mesh to estimate post alignments. Then we align the CAD model to the mesh, segment out the pieces of original mesh that correspond to the CAD model, and fill holes on the floors and walls lefted by previous operation. To make CAD models blending visually with the original scene, we transfer the texture from original mesh to the CAD models based on vertex distance. At the end of our process, we obtain a model where the robot can freely interact with the elements. Here is a comparison between the original non-interactive meshes and the interactive models resulting from our annotation pipeline. In the first Gibson environment with non-interactive meshes, the robot will slide to continue navigation. In the iGibson environment, the object reacts to the robot's interaction in a more realistic manner. Additionally, the quality of the model 
improve as we replace the partial scans with the complete CAD models at the cost of losing some fine details such as the objects on the table. After processing with our pipeline, we obtain a simulation environment that serves to study interactive navigation. As part of the benchmark, we propose a novel score, the Interactive Navigation Score, to capture the trade-off between executing the shortest path and minimizing effort during navigation. The Interactive Navigation Score is a convex combination of path efficiency and effort efficiency, controlled by a combination parameter alpha, which can be used to inject human preferences between aggressive and conservative behavior when ranking interactive navigation solutions. To give an intuition of INS, let's imagine there is a scene with interactive obstacles on the shortest path for the robot. If robot would follow the shortest path, the path efficiency term would be 1, but the effort efficiency would be low as the robot would invest effort colliding and moving objects. On the contrary, if the robot would avoid all interactive objects, the effort efficiency will be 1, but the path efficiency will be low due to detours. Path efficiency compares the shortest path and the path traversed. It defines similarly to the novel SPL metric proposed to evaluate robot navigation solutions. Effort efficiency is the average of two terms. The first term, kinetic disturbance, compares the kinetic energy spent to move the robot itself with the kinetic energy spent in total. The second term, dynamic disturbance, is the ratio between the force on the robot due, due to gravity and all the forces on the robot, gravity and the active force generated by the motor to move and interact. In our experiments, we find the two disturbance to facilitate research in our benchmark for this new type of navigation task, we provide several reinforced learning solutions. They take as input depth and semantic maps, and output linear and angular velocity of the robot. We train the policy network with three state-of-the-art reinforced learning algorithms, PPO, SAC, and DDPG. The reward is constructed with three terms. The first term, success reward, gives a one-time large reward when the robot arrives at the goal. The second term, the potential reward, encourages the robot to approach the goal minimizing the geodesic distance. The third term, the interaction penalty, penalizes the robot for colliding with objects. This last term is controlled by a scaling factor k. The larger k is, the more interactions are penalized. Smaller k generate more path efficient behaviors that interact more, being less effort efficient. We use k to create solutions with different interaction behaviors that we use to rank with our novel interactive navigation score, as we see in the following. We will now present some visualizations of trained policies. The visualizations are top-down views of environments depicting the robot as a red dot, starting in a location indicated in blue and going to a location indicated in yellow. The shortest path ignoring interactive obstacles is shown with a blue line. In these top-down videos, we demonstrate the behavior of the robot when interaction penalty is low. The robot exploits interactions with the environment to navigate and takes a path that is close to the shortest path, achieving a high path efficiency but low effort efficiency. On the other hand, if we increase the interaction penalty, the behavior becomes more effort efficient with less interactions, but the robot also follows less optimal navigation paths. On the left, the robot is blocked by a small object at the door and fails to push it and reach the target location. On the right, the robot takes a detour to avoid small objects. These diverse behaviors can be generated and studied because our new environment allows the agent to interact with the environment and change its state while achieving a navigation. In this plot, we compare different reinforced learning algorithms and different interaction penalty parameters using both components of our novel INS metric. There is a clear trade-off between path efficiency and effort efficiency. Improving one decreases the other, as highlighted by the dashed line. Finally, to evaluate how well we generalize to unseen environments, we train on eight environments and test it on two unseen environments. In the figure, we depict the interactive navigation score on training set and on evaluation set. There is no performance drop from the training set to evaluation set. This shows that the baseline policies can generalize to unseen environment and object configurations. In the future, we would like to consider more semantically meaningful interactions with objects, such as different interactions with different classes of objects. 
We are also extending interactive navigation to more types of interactions, for example, using the arm of a mobile manipulator. Finally, we would like to evaluate our interactive navigation solutions in the real world. Since iGibson maintains high quality visual models, we expect this to facilitate sim to real transfer. The interactive Gibson environment and benchmark are publicly available. We invite other researchers to participate, develop, and compare their own interactive navigation solutions with our baselines. Thank you.